after we witnessed a deadly insurrection in the very capital building that this vote is now taking place. We think so much in our country uh, in terms of tarnished legacies of presidents and, and President Nixon, when President Nixon comes to mind. I think a lot of people would say that Donald Trump and the legacy that he is leaving behind after this week surpasses that undistinguished legacy that Nixon has left. And now Donald Trump is looking at a legacy that it includes a second impeachment. Never happened before, as you say, you heard many Democrats say they believe Bill Graham is the worst president in American okay. history. I want to bring in Terry Moran uh, as well. And Terry, I was struck over the course of the, of the several hours. Uh, the Democrats were reaching to make this an historic moment to talk about the fact oh, yeah, that, that this has never Democrats happened before. We've never had a president who's a clear and present danger like this. Um, but it's but for several of the speakers, it seemed like politics as usual. I was struck by the same thing, George. It, it sounded like a cable news debate at some point. The, the whataboutism, the, the, the last refuge of scoundrels in today's America. What about what your side did? We heard that a lot. The, the going back to other issues, this was a trauma for the entire country. It happened the last week. And, and in defense of the president, it did yeah. seem like things wandered far uh, far away from that trauma and that point. Uh, but there's a big difference. I think there's a reason for it. The whole thing that Donald Trump as a person has over 70, 80 percent of Republicans. Look at the Republicans are outside uh, of office. The Attorney General and uh, former Attorney General William Barr, Education Secretary resigned, Treasury Secretary resigned, all of President Trump's former uh, National Security Advisors and aides. They all came out and said he did it. He, he encouraged it from November 3rd on, he summoned them up, he incited them, he directed them. But in, those in power cannot get to that point. And, and I do think that reminds me of what happened inside the Capitol seven days ago. It wasn't the American flag that you saw so much. It was the Trump flag. They took down the American flag to fly the Trump flag, and that is what's happening in the Republican Party. He has a hold on it such that... What you see is politics as usual, even after the catastrophe of last week. Trump flag and sadly the Confederate flag as well in the halls of Congress. I want to bring in Rahm Emanuel. Rahm, you served in that institution. Have you ever seen a debate like this? Uh, I've seen, uh, no. The short end of it is I have not seen this. you got to combine it with the uh, other impeachment debate. And this is historic in the sense that you have the first president ever to be impeached twice. And I would like to, you know, put two points to bring on. That the basic premise is, and the Republicans made this, there's not enough time or a process argument. Look, when it comes to defending the Constitution, there is no statute of limitations. And you either saw what happened here as a threat to the Constitution, a threat to the nation, a threat to democracy, or you didn't. It's that simple. And the second piece is a lot of people talk about healing, and Mary Bruce brought up this argument about people, you know, just a week ago, they had actually voted to. Just yeah, basically ignore the electoral college. You know, healing talks them. about the body and the kind of body politic. The you cannot are winning. heal a wound if you leave it in It's just simple medicine. And the notion that you're going to begin healing by leaving this open wound.